Hopefully you can see my screen. Hopefully you can hear me. Just move my microphone up a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, there we go. Just have a look over. Yep. Can you hear me okay, darling? Oh, you can't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, great. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. Um, I just thought we'd start with the, and I'll try and keep my microphone on, unlike last week when I switched it off and was babbling on for about 10 minutes. Um, I just thought I'd start with the power, with the uh, currency array because it's it's just one of those indicators that gives you so much information. It primarily tells you about uh, universal sentiment, but more importantly about the strength of trends in particular currency pairs, obviously whether they're rising or falling, whether that buying or selling is universal across the complex. And in addition to that, and which I just wanted to show you here, is it also gives you an idea of what is actually driving that particular pair. As Anna said, it's it's a question of finding out the ideal perfect scenario is where you've got strong buying in one currency and strong selling in the counter currency. That's what you're constantly looking for because that will ultimately deliver the strongest trend of all. Just taking the pound New Zealand, which I've also got up on the charts, but if you take the pound New Zealand as an example, you can see here it's up at the top on all three. So there's very uh, there's a very strong move in the pound New Zealand. What you're trying to establish is whether that's being driven on both sides or whether it's being driven more on one side than the other. So if you isolate out the pound, for example, it's it's not universal. Uh, ideally, what you'd want to see, obviously, you'd want to see the euro pound down here. It is has been driven primarily through a strength in the pound. Now, that's not to say that these other pairs won't actually ultimately move up to join the pound New Zealand up here and sweep upwards. But at the moment, that's not the case. And obviously, that can change. But that's what's happening right now. This is on the three minute, by the way. This is the five minute. This is the 10 minute. So these are pretty fast time frames. So let's put that back on. Now we're going to have a look at New Zealand dollar. So what's happening on New Zealand dollar? Ah, OK. What is that telling us? Well, what it's telling us loud and clear is that actually the New Zealand is being hammered pretty much universally. It's not a perfect full house, but it's pretty much uh, near as damn it. This one needs to move up here, and then you'd have a full house where you've got these three at the top and these four at the bottom. So what that's telling you in isolating out New Zealand is that it is very much the New Zealand that is driving this move. That's not to say there isn't pound buying as well, but the strength of this move is predominantly at the moment being driven by the selling of the New Zealand dollar. But that's what you need to do all the time. If we move up to the five minute, let's just isolate out again. Pretty much the same picture. We've got this crowd grouped here, these three or four here. Pound New Zealand up at the top, strongest. Pound Aussie trying to follow it. Uh, but the, the euro pound is, is, uh, is a laggard. In other words, it's not falling down here. But again, if we isolate back onto the New Zealand, there we go. Similar picture there. So trading the New Zealand right now, in other words, what that is telling you is that universally, for whatever reason, fundamental, politics, whatever it may be, everyone, the market per se, certainly on the faster timeframes right now, is selling the New Zealand dollar. And that's what it's telling you loud and clear. Let's just pop that back on again. And finally, let's go up to the 10 minute. Just isolate that out again. Now on the 10 minute, it's a little bit clearer. You can see that uh, the the universal sentiment aspect towards the pound is certainly stronger than it is on the faster time frames. Obviously, then you'd have to go and look at the CSIs, which you will in a minute, just to get a feel for that. Then we'll hop over onto the charts. And if we isolate out again on the New Zealand dollar, there we go. That is basically the picture. So the picture from, from the three minute, probably from the two minute, right the way through to the 10 minute, it's pretty much universal in what it's telling you about what is going on in terms of the New Zealand dollar right now. And of course, the other aspect to the currency array is that the um, on the ranking ladder here, you obviously get the ranking of the pairs themselves. And then in addition to that, on this second uh, ladder, this will give you a heads up as to when those particular currency pairs, as opposed to the currencies themselves on the currency strength indicator, when the currency pairs here, are approaching potential overbought and oversold situations. And they will flash up here in the darker color with the brackets on when it's um, getting too potentially overbought and when it's getting too, when it's at how it has arrived at an overbought or oversold situation, as indeed down here, you can see New Zealand dollar, New Zealand yen down here, 
have arrived at a potentially oversold. They go solid on the lines down here to give you a heads up. Then it's a question of going over the chart. If you're a reversal trader, that may be what you're waiting for. You're looking for that opportunity to jump in and take the reversal position, but it's just giving you that sense. It's not taking a signal off the indicator, but it's just giving you that sense of what is setting up in terms of the timeframes. Just head over onto the charts, and I've got the pound New Zealand on there, I think. Just, there we go. Yep, get that out of the way. Now, what's interesting right now is clearly uh, we've gone through the London Open. We're 12 minutes into the London Open. I'm just looking over on the other screen because I've got the uh, UK 100 running, got the VIX running in a moment. Um, but in terms of the UK index, that's up uh, 17. So it's it's up, but it's looking a little bit weedy at the moment. So in terms of sentiment, in terms of this particular pair, Obviously, what we've got, uh, probably let's have a look at uh, the 15. Let's pop that one up full size. Now, when Anna was uh, talking, I, I was obviously watching this uh, develop, this particular move. And I saw this particular candle come in. This was just as we were approaching the London Open. What have we got here? We've got uh, volume coming in, which is what we expect to see. We expect to see a rise in volume. We're now seeing this massive increase in volume as we get deeper into the London session. So this will be the first candle of the London session for this particular pair. Now, you may not be able to see it very clearly. I'll just pull it out a little bit. But this has a very big wick to the upper body. In fact, it just touches the top of the volume point of control histogram there. Now, depending on how this candle finishes, and at the moment it's looking a little bit weak, if it finishes with all this volume and with this uh, shadow to the uh, the upper body, then that is giving us a signal that this is potentially looking at a reversal opportunity. And that goes back to what I was saying about the uh, on the currency array, when the currency pairs themselves are setting up for potential reversal opportunities. If you're a reversal trader, if you're looking for a trend, a trend trading opportunity, it's a question of waiting and being patient and then jumping on the trend once it develops. The quid pro quo, the payoff is, as I'm sure many of you know, I love trading reversals. That's where my eye is always drawn to the first point on the chart. In terms of the currency strength indicator, at any rate, I'm always looking at the extremes because I want to trade reversals. Why? Because it means I get in early and I maximize the return I get on that particular trade. The, the, the risk I have to lay on the table is much higher because I would have to put a stop loss in that takes account of this and probably a little bit wider as well. But the fact of the matter is for a higher risk, I'd be looking at a higher return. But that's really the difference because once you jump on a trend, the trend is underway. If you're a scalping trader, intraday trader trading on fast charts, your stop loss might be a handful of pips. It might be four, five, six pips. If I'm trading a reversal on the same sort of time frames. I'd probably be looking at 10, maybe 15 even, possibly even more depending on the pair. If, you, if you're dealing with a wide ranging pair with a wide uh, spread, then you're gonna have to set it a lot wider than if you're dealing with something which is a little bit more measured and has a much much lower spread. So it's all swings and roundabouts, but the the uh, the the outcome is, is very simple. You put higher risk, you get higher reward. You put lower risk on the table, it's lower reward. It's as simple as that. And of course, the other aspect of trading reversals is patience. You've got to be patient. You have to wait. Currencies move to overbought and oversold all the time. They don't just spin on a sixpence and reverse nicely for you straight off the bat. You often have to wait. You've got to wait for congestion periods. Then you've got to wait for the breakaway. And if the breakaway confirms with volume, you know, you're off to the race. It's as simple as that. OK, we've now got two signs of weakness. This was in the European session because this was coming up to eight o'clock. So this is six o'clock our time. So seven o'clock when Europe gets underway was in around here somewhere. So a decent move on decent volume. Then we get the sign of weakness with the last candle. Now we've got an absolute ton of volume coming in as London gets underway and a deep wick to the upper candle. And that's looking pretty weak now as a reversal opportunity. Let's just uh, take, take that, uh, pick that up on the slightly slower time frames. This is on 10. So this is giving us a similar uh, situation, similar setup, big wick, lots of volume, big wick. Yeah, the market tried to rally, but even higher volume. So, you know, it's looking pretty weak and a nice opportunity for a reversal trade. And if you're down on the 15 second, which um, I don't say I live there, but uh, it's certainly a chart I always have up. 
Um, there we go. Here we are back over eight o'clock. This is uh, London Open. Rallying up, then we get a nice big bearish engulfing candle on that one. Down we go through the various levels. Uh, when you move through uh, areas like this of low volume nodes, then you know you're expecting the market to go through there pretty rapidly because there's nothing in the way to to cause it to pause. Trend Monis is picking up the bearish sentiment. You can get all the little signals here. You know, you've had a little rally here, falling in volume. Okay, terrific. Then we get weakness coming in. Nice volume bar on that one. Weakness appearing. More weakness here effort to rise, bang, doesn't want to know, trying to rally, trying to rally all the time, more weakness here, now we're trading around the volume point of control, volume's building, so we're expecting congestion. Above, we've got uh, the accumulation distribution, so we're looking at this from a price perspective now in terms of resistance, this heavy dashed line, basically the thicker the line, the stronger the, the region, because that's how the indicator works. It constantly recalculates every time an, a level is tested or retested, and then it widens the line accordingly. It's just a fantastic way of presenting support and resistance. You don't have to draw lines. You have no idea how strong that line is or how weak, and it's constantly doing that in real time. So if a level changes, as you've seen there, it weakens a little bit. It's still pretty strong. It's at four. It's been tested, uh, retested four times. These other levels up here are slightly weaker. We've got two, and we've got one up here as well. And when you get little clusters of these, that adds strength to that region as well. So that's from a price-based perspective. Obviously, volume performs that same uh, metric, if you will, but from a volume-based uh, uh, approach. So this histogram is basically taking the volume price relationship that we see on the x-axis, which is this one and this one, and swinging it up onto the y-axis and basically bringing the concept of time. Because the longer a market is in congestion, the heavier will be those concentrations of volume. And once the market breaks away, when you get to low volume nodes as a trader, you're looking for the market to move through that swiftly. Where it gets to higher volumes, then you're looking for the market to potentially uh, congest and pause at the very least. And if it's going to break through those regions, it will require effort. Just pick up what's going on, back down onto the 15. There we are, that's what we're seeing right now. OK, let's go back on to the currency strength indicators and see where we are in multiple time frames. Everything we do is in multiple time frames. doesn't matter whether you're on tick charts, whether you're on Renko, whether you're on the indicators, whether you're on time based charts. Everything is about multiple time frames. And this is basically what we're seeing right now. In terms of the pound uh, New Zealand we were on there, what we're seeing in effect is, yes, we had some selling coming in on the pound. But we've actually got strong buying on the New Zealand. And what, uh, what is developing at the moment, and the reason we're seeing congestion, is this pound is actually kicking up again. So in terms of a reversal opportunity, it's not the best one to be looking at. It's giving you a signal of weakness. But in terms of the pairs rising, you've actually got the New Zealand and the pound now rising together. So that's why you're seeing congestion. So in terms of a trending opportunity, what we'll be looking at now is really spoiled for choice. You'll be looking at maybe New Zealand dollar. You can see the dollar here, the red line is falling very strongly. New Zealand's rising very strongly, so there'd be a nice trend. Don't even need to look at the chart to tell you that. Same as developing on five here. New Zealand very strongly overbought, along with the Aussie. And it's always nice to see the commodity currencies. What we've got at the moment is divergence, which is quite interesting. We've got the Canadian here falling, but we've actually got New Zealand and the Aussie rising together. Patterns, you know, nothing perfect in the trading world, in the Forex world. Normally, they, they rise and fall together, but it's distorted by oil at the moment, which is a heavy influencer of the Canadian uh, uh, Canadian dollar right now. So this is going to happen a lot. But in terms of trading opportunities, New Zealand's rising, Aussie's rising strongly. We've got the dollar selling off nicely. We've got the CAD selling off nicely. So really spoiled for choice. And on we go down. across. just move the chat box out of the way. There we go. On we go down across the time frames. And then what you're looking for is... In terms of development of that trend, this is crossing now. You're looking for that trend of your particular time window. This is three to 15, but it could be anything. It could be could be a minute to three. It could be uh, it could be 15 minutes throughout the round to through to the hourlies, even longer, two hour four. It doesn't matter. The principle is the same. What you're looking for is the development of what is going on here feeding through into the slightly slower time frame on down here you can see the new zealand hasn't even started its travel yet on the 10 minute and in terms of the 15 minute it's just over here on the right hand side again 
it hasn't actually started. I'll just slide that over a little bit. There we go, get that back in again. There we are. Um, so it hasn't actually started, and indeed hasn't even got to oversold in terms of that particular time horizon anyway. We've got some strong selling on the euro on that particular time frame. So there's plenty of opportunity, but what we're looking for now is if we were trading one of these, New Zealand, for example, New Zealand dollar, then what we're ideally looking for is this to continue obviously higher, the dollar to continue lower. We want this to carry on. We want this to cross. And if it's going to develop into a longer, longer term trend, then this will start to rise and this will start to fall. I put the New Zealand dollar up on the chart. There we go. That's our pound New Zealand, which is flip-flopping around at the moment. We know the reason why, because the pound, whilst New Zealand is moving strongly, the pound isn't. So if we just change this to, uh, what was it, New Zealand dollar. There we go. That's what's starting to develop. And you can start to see why instantly when you drop down onto the 15. Why? Because you've got some buying coming in here. You've got a decent amount of volume under that particular candle. You've got some decent buying. Now, for this to develop, we've got some issues. It's nice to see the volume falling away. If this is going to continue higher, it's got to battle its way through here. So we want to see decent volume driving this. We've managed to claw through here this level of uh, pretty strong resistance that was in place here. You can see you've got two levels there as a cluster. So that's pretty strong. If that's going to go through there, it's got to have decent volume supporting it. And then as it battles its way through here, once it gets to this level, it should should move through there pretty swiftly. And then it's into the next level. Now, in terms of a trading opportunity, what you have to decide is, is that sufficient for me? Is there enough, are there enough pips in there to make this trade worthwhile? And the only way you judge that is you judge it from what is on the chart. You don't take some notional, oh, well, I need a three to one ratio before I'll enter a trade. I mean, come on, get reasonable. This is a market. The market doesn't care what you want or what you need. The market delivers the information through the chart. It will tell you that information and you then make a decision. You look at the chart in the multiple time frames. You look and see what's ahead. What is likely to cause this market to pause or reverse potentially? Is there enough travel in there? Is there enough profit potential in there for me to take this trade? Am I comfortable with the risk? And if not, you reject it and move on to something else. It's as simple as that, but it's all done off the chart. It's very, very simple and straightforward. Can I pass back to you, darling? One second. Oh, okay. One second. No problem. Let's just uh, go and pick up what's happening on uh, indices. Let's get the sentiment flavor. Just got the, let's move that down out of the way. Uh, this was yesterday, came off a little bit. Um, you know, it's not looking terribly strong. It's all looking very fragile, which is no great surprise. If I just pull this over, this is the um, UK. I mentioned earlier, it wasn't looking uh, great. This is UK 100, FTSE 100. Uh, it was actually up earlier on. Uh, it was up about, started open up, uh, came up about 20 odd points. Now it's uh, starting to sell off. You can see we've got some weakness coming in on on the 10 minute at the uh, at the start, so it's not uh, no great surprise. Uh, just see what's going on in the VIX. VIX actually opens gap down, uh, which is uh, interesting, um, but we'll see what that's doing. That's in congestion here at the moment. It's not doing a great deal. So that's the UK 100 and the VIX. Just keep an eye on that. And whatever you're trading, whether you're trading, and it really doesn't matter what you're trading, you should have the VIX up. Whether you're a, an index trader trading gold, commodities, whether you're a stock investor, day trading stocks, uh, forex trade, doesn't matter. Have the VIX up. It just gives you that instant heads up on sentiment. So that's what's going on in terms of uh, US indices right now. This is on Globex, so we're running on electronic. I don't know why that one hasn't loaded. Let's just reload that. There we go. And as you can see on, this is on the five minute, this is on the NASDAQ right now. We're building around the volume point of control. We've got a very, very strong level here of uh, potential resistance, which has now been breached. It was acting as support. It's now uh, acting as resistance. We've got volume coming in here. It's all looking a little bit, a uh, little bit fragile at the moment. If the market breaks to the downside, and this is what I was trying to explain about the earlier chart, if you were looking at this as a potential short, let's say you're looking at this as a breakaway trading opportunity from this volume point of control, then the judgment call is, okay, what have I got that's like to cause uh, this market to, to pause, find some support? 
We've got very little price base support here. This is only one and one, so very, very uh, lightweight. You've got some very thin volume below. And these are, these are big numbers here, by the way, in terms of profit potential. But you've got very lightweight volume here. And if you were looking at that as a breakaway, that would certainly be an opportunity that uh, I would be interested in. You want to see high volume driving in here. You want to see weakness. You've got a lot of resistance overhead. And once the market breaks the downside, you then have a very strong uh, a resistance area above. Once it gets down to this sort of level, it should go through there pretty swiftly. You've got very light volume. You can see it's falling away dramatically all the way down here. This is on five minute, by the way. And that's what you're looking for the whole time. That's the that's the way to analyze a chart and identify the opportunity and decide whether it's worth the risk of the amount of money you're putting on the table. Do you think it's a reasonable uh, profit potential reward? So a quick look at the currency charts themselves, currency indices. These are the four, I've got the yen, dollar, euro, and pound. This is on five minute across the top, all the way down. This is 15 minute CSI, so it gives you a heads up what's going on. You can see that New Zealand there is just starting to kick up there on 15, dollar starting to roll. This is the dollar on five, so it's starting to roll. You can see a little bit of weakness here. I haven't got volume on here, but you can see the weakness coming in. Really, I have to start to look at the candles. You know, how many candles have I got with big wicks of the upper body? Quite a few in here. We've got a doji candle there, but it's not looking terribly, terribly strong. We have one to the bottom there, but it's immediately rejected down to the downside. This is the pound trying to rally, come off a little bit into congestion. We had a strong move, but now it's in congestion. Euro looks a little bit weak and the yen's moving sideways at the moment, certainly in terms of that time frame. Can I pass back to you, darling? Okay. Just going to switch screens. <laughs> 